Welcome to Green Ministries International, where Dr. Adrian Green is founder and senior teacher. If this is your first time listening or watching one of the productions, we pray that you enjoy and are blessed by the words being brought forth. Now, here's Dr. Adrian Green. Your life depends on what it is you hear, learn, and apply in God's Word. Satan don't mind you going to church. He don't even care about you going to Bible study. What he does not want you to come into is a revelation of who Christ is in your life. That's the difference. Are you with me? Hear what I'm going to tell you. And I th I've already started taking flack for what, what I'm saying. God told me if I shut my mouth, you're going to hold me responsible for it. God said the church as an organism is not dead and it's not dying. But there are four, the four-walled churches that we see today, he says they're dying. He said they're dying because my spirit is not there. My word is not there. The power of the Holy Spirit is not there. And he said, if I be lifted up, let me tell you what happened. It's in, it's in Ezekiel, it was on, the, on our website, in Ezekiel 34th chapter. God spoke these words to me. He said this, here what I'm going to tell you. <sighs> A lot of people, and I'm talking about the sheep of Israel, the sheep represent God's people. Are you with me? God's people are hungry. They're looking, they're searching. The big churches, here what I'm going to tell you, the sheep are starting to scatter, and I, got, I asked God what was going on. Sheep start scattering. Sheep start wandering when they're not being fed. When they start drying up, the Bible says this in Psalms 23, that, that, that he'll lead you, the sheep, beside still waters. When the waters get turbulent, sheep are going to move. When grass starts dying, dying sheep are going to start move, moving. Are you with me? <sighs> You have to ask yourself, and when, when I'm, t I'm talking, I'm talking to those who are here, but I'm also talking to our internet audience, I'm talking to our radio audience, but I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you, because a lot of us get in our spirit, we get, we're getting agitated. You are a sheep by spiritual nature, are you with me? And you are sensitive to a lot of things, even if you don't know you're sensitive to them. When you start getting agitated in your spirit, you need to check it. When things start agitating you, check up on it. Don't let it go, because you, when you pray about it, pray about something, and then God shows it to you, most of y'all close your eyes to it instead of dealing with it. Your spirit, some of y'all sitting right now, your spirit has been agitated. You're hungry. You're, you're, you're frustrated. You're disturbed, and you don't understand why you're like that. Amen? There are things that you've been asking God for. There are things that God promised you, and you just don't see them happening in your life. Are you with me? And God spoke these words and said this. He said, tell my people to start wielding their swords. Tell them that, that we're still in operational spiritual warfare and let them know that unless they start binding and loosing and taking authority over their own situations, there's nothing I can do. He, God said, I've transferred my power to the church, I've, and I haven't taken it back. So when you're praying to God, people get mad when I say this. The Bible says we, man have to always pray and not think. But you have to understand that in this proper context. God spoke these words to me, and I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you. Because I mean, I know what I'm talking about. God said, we pray too much. We pray. I can feel y'all in the spirit already. We pray, and we pray, and we pray. But you're not praying for the right reasons. Prayer is nothing more than your communication and your fellowship with God. That's your intimate time with God. You talk to him, and he talks back to you. Are you with me? And in your prayer time, God is going to commune with you. He's going to talk back to you. But when God talks back to you, he's not going to come out of heaven and start fixing your life. He's going to give you some instructions. He's going to start dealing with you on some issues. He's going to expect you to walk in the power and the authority he's given you. He's going to point you in the direction. He's going to show you people. He's going to show you places. He's going to show you things. And expect you to deal with them. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you go to God in communion, in your secret place, in your prayer closet, and begin to talk with God, God going to talk back to you. When he talks back to you, and he's going to step back on his throne and expect you to handle your business on earth in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? And when I saw certain things in Scripture, I began to see why the church of Jesus Christ is dying. I had a dream some years ago. <sighs> People looked real funny when I said this, but I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you. In the spiritual realm, I saw Jesus Christ as a quadriplegic in a wheelchair. I said, God, what are you showing me? He said, that's my church. My church is like a quadriplegic. The head is still intact, but the body is useless. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Y'all looking at me like I'm making stuff up. I'm telling I saw that God said he's going to start bringing me to Revelation like he did with Paul. I'm going to show you stuff. He told me not to close my eyes and not to close my mouth. What's wrong with the church today is this. We are not operating in kingdom 
authority. We've been given the keys to the kingdom. Amen. And we're not utilizing them. You've got power and you've got authority. Here, what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to move on. You can cry all night about what your situation is. You can cry and say, why you, why me, and how much longer? You'll be doing that till Jesus come back. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all just cried last night. About the same thing you've been crying for the last three months, six months, last six years. All I'm saying, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm trying to get you to see something. If God was, it don't take, the Bible, can we, if I show you in the work, you, you're okay with it, right? The word of God says this, my arms are not so short that I can't save. My ears not so dull that I can't hear. So what's the problem? Guys, I heard you the first time you prayed. I, I, I reached out to you the first time you called on me. My arms aren't short. So what's the problem? How come I haven't reached you yet? Something to think about, isn't it? God hasn't reached your situation yet. God hasn't reached your family yet. He hasn't reached your finance. And I'm going to tell you all something about some finances. <laughs> Y'all got your own finances in your own hands. I showed you that last week, but I'm going I'm to break, break it open and finalize it. We're going to put the exclamation point on it. On, on it. <sighs> we are in a war. We've declared Operation Spiritual Warfare. Did we, have we not? And in doing so, <sighs> and in declaring Operation Spiritual Warfare, Satan has come at you full force. He's already declared war against you. You might as well stand up and declare war back. That's what we've been doing. Satan more afraid of you than you are of him. What do you want to tell you? He, Satan does not want you to come into the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus. And I'm going to show, show you this in just a minute. When I, he, remember what I said? I'm, I'm going to break it down in just a minute. Satan has usurped your authority. Do you hear me? Remember I said what I said that? Satan has usurped your authority. When you understand what that word usurp means, it's going to blow your mind. And after the night, I promise you, the devil will never take what belongs to you again. He can't take what belongs to you. Because you've come, my people, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for what? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What you don't know, I don't know who came up with that, they lied. What you don't know will hurt you. And in some instances, will kill you. Are you with me? Now, while you're sitting there trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet, how you're going to get your bills paid, and how you're going to get the windows of heaven open up under you, you pay. I'm going to tell you what the biggest problem in the church is, God told me, I want you to hear, especially financially. Hear what I'm about to tell you. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says this, money answers all matters, and money is a defense. But yet the church ain't got no money. I said, God, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, they always do, don't they, Dina? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. God said that money is the defense, and money answers all matters. If money answers all matters, how come the church is lacking what it needs in all matters? Let me tell you where some of y'all are frustrated right now, if not all of you. This is the church. You pay your tithes and give your offering. Not because the preacher say so. You know what's right because it's in the word. But when you pay your tithes for weeks, months, and some of y'all years, and you don't see a return or you don't see the blessings that God promised you in Malachi, you start growing weary. Mm -hmm. When God told you, be not weary in your well-doing for in due season. Some of y'all been going through a season for a long time. You've been going through a winter season for a long, long time. I'm going to yeah. snap that cold snap. I'm going to snap that cold spell tonight through the word of God. I'm going to tell you how. You're going to have to stand up and be the church of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to stand up and be who God called you to be. You're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to stand up and start playing church and start being the church. We, remember when we were smart, you had to play house? Because you couldn't wait to grow up? Now y'all wish I can go back to playing house, right? <laughs> Them bills ain't no joke, right? <laughs> but y'all, we couldn't wait to grow up. We wanted to play mommy and daddy. We played nurse and doctor. We, I mean, we played growing up. We wanted to play house. We didn't can't grow, up, grow grew up, became Christians, and we're doing the same thing we were doing when we were younger in the natural. Instead of being the church, we play in church. Instead of maturing and becoming the church, we, we, we think it's more fun to play church. Making people think we're all deep in spirit. Thank you for taking time out to join us for this teaching. We hope you enjoyed the message. Green Ministries is a sword and spirit ministry that is dedicated to biblical teaching on spiritual warfare. Please visit the website at greenministriesinternational.com for any and all of your spiritual needs. Till next time, thanks again for listening and do have a beautiful, blessed day.